Hi, this is Charlie for Topic and in this video I'll be looking at the new Sigma MC11 Canon EF mount to Sony E-mount converter. Up to now all converters available for the Sony E-mount on the A7 series were at best a compromise. You could either use the limited range of propriety lenses or suffer the limitations of third-party adapters and lenses on your A7S or A7R cameras. And the A7 platform promises so much versatility, but it was severely handicapped by this issue with converters and you're trying to use other lenses on it. But this new MC11 is about to change everything. It is the first converter in the world to promise full compatibility with the amazing autofocus features of the Sony A7 series and EF mount lenses. The only catch? It's only going to work with selected Sigma lenses. Now let's look at the converter itself. Like all the new high-end offerings from Sigma, like the Art Range lenses, this converter has a solid feel and overall good build quality. The finishing on it is also world-class and it feels and looks much better than the Metabones adapters. One big difference between this and the Metabones adapter is that this does not have a little built-in lens support and quarter-inch socket at the bottom. Now that's great for stills use because you don't have this little block that sticks out at the bottom. It's much sleeker, easier to handhold. Um, but when you shoot video with heavier lenses on the front, it might become a little bit of an issue because that was a little handy feature on the Metabones, that little lens support block at the bottom. This converter features a USB port on the one side for future updates and a handy little LED indicator on the other side that helps you to identify compatible lenses. Basically all you do is attach a lens switch the camera on and if that LED lights up green you're all good to go. If it lights up orange the lens is compatible but you just need to do a control data update on your uh, little converter and if it doesn't light up at all then the lens is not compatible. Right let's start testing the compatibility of this little converter with Sigma um, EOS mount lenses on the A7R2 and the A7S2. Now to start with, I'm just going to use the Sigma 24-35mm f2 art lens on it. Now the first obvious feature to test would be the aperture. So let's take a look. We've got the lens attached and we can see there we've got full aperture control throughout the whole zoom range. So that works really well. But that's not the exciting thing. I mean the sales point of this converter is the fact that we're supposed to have full autofocus capabilities. So let's give that a good test. Now in stills mode, if we click here on the function button, we'll see that all of our modes, focus modes, are now available with this converter and using a Sigma EOS mount lens. The other great feature is, not just do we have all the autofocus modes available, we also have all the focus areas available, especially the really great lock-on autofocus features. So we can now basically lock on to a spot and let the camera track it for us. As for the, for the first test, I'm just going to switch the camera focus mode to single point and I'm just going to use the center point focus area. So let's see how snap it is. I'm going to hold my hand in the scene. You can see that's quite fast. So it misses the focus a little bit at the back there, but if I put my hand in the scene, it picks it up immediately. Nice and snappy, and face tracking feature should work as well. Uncanny. Now the single point autofocus mode works really well on this camera combined with this Sigma converter and the Sigma EOS mount lenses. And it seems now this converter allows the camera to fully utilize all those little face detection points of also all the contrast autofocus detection points that this A7R2 has got built in. But now let's give it a real test. I'm going to switch to continuous autofocus mode so that I can activate what's called the lock-on autofocus area. And I'm just going to choose here a large spot and let's put it there somewhere on the side. Now I'm just going to put my hand in the scene 
close that little focus point try and get it to lock on and see if it can track it well that's really impressive especially considering that previously to get um, to this feature you had to use Sony's proprietary lenses so this is really great now another feature that gets activated using this converter is Sony's manual focus assist now to get to the manual fo focus assist feature just have to scroll onto the menus and under the little gear menu options we'll find it on the um, first page listing right there MF assist just make sure that's on and just double check the time that you want it to be activated for so to activate this feature is really easy all we do is on the lens this is going to swap over from um, autofocus to manual focus using the switch on the lens grab the focus ring and we'll see the moment I grab and start focusing the camera will zoom in for me at the back on the LCD screen and I can actually see what I'm doing and remember you can also move this little point around and position it in your scene where you want it now what about the autofocus capabilities in video mode well I'm just going to flick the camera over to video mode on the top dial and if we use the function button we can see that all the focus modes are still activated that we have available in video mode um, and we can adjust our focus points or focus areas so I'm just going to choose a let's go for the expanded flexible spot and I'm just going to position it somewhere else to see if it can track the focus and this is try and focus on my hand there there we go focuses now if I move my hand in and out the focus adjusts on that little spot and it's trying to keep my hand in focus which is really clever it's a little bit slow but I think that's more limitation of the camera itself than the lens and the converter just one thing you have to keep in mind if autofocus is switched on on the lens the autofocus tracking is constantly on on the camera while you're in video mode and it constantly tries to track the focus and obviously that's just gonna destroy your battery life so if you don't need to have autofocus while in video rather just switch it off on the lens now let's take a look at our steady shot options using this little converter so I'm just gonna go to the camera menu so under your little camera tab itself in the menu number eight we can see that steady shot at the moment is on and activated so in theory the stabilization of the camera is now being done by the chip itself that's moving around because this lens doesn't have any form of IS or OS on it so now I'm just going to switch this lens out for another Sigma lens that has OS or optical stabilization built in now before I just swap a lens out I'm just going to turn the camera off because we found out the hard way never to do hot swap so that's a swap while the camera is actually on using the Metabones adapters on these little cameras as well as the bigger FS7s because it just basically fries the little converter so I don't know how sensitive this one is or not but as I would suggest it's always a safer thing with converters turn the camera off before you swap the lens do not hot swap now the machining on this converter is really well done and um, the lens is really fits in smoothly and clicks in quite good so you can see here I'm just using my little 17 to 55 um, DC f2.8 to f4 lens uh, the reason for that it's got OS on it and I'm just going to activate it here on the lens and also switch it back to autofocus now when I turn the camera back on one of the interesting things to note is that the camera has automatically picked up that that is actually a, a crop frame lens designed for the APS-C size chips so it's automatically applying an APS-C size crop for us so if it doesn't automatically crop and you get a um, serious vignetting in the corners just go into your menus uh, and you you'll find it under the little settings icon the little gear icon page number six you'll find a setting for APS-C or super 35 mil um, options and just make sure that's either switched on or switched to auto let's have a look at what happens 
to our steady shot options that we, now that we're using a lens it's actually got some sort of stabilization built into it so I'm gonna go back into my menu options and remember that's on the little camera icon tab all the way out to page 8 we'll now see that the steady shot options are grayed out and if I try and go into that function it warns as it says it's invalid with this lens the lens has a steady shot switch so we have to perform this five operational function from the lens itself so basically use a little switch on the side of the lens to activate your optical stabilization or to switch it off but great it picks it up through this converter and that's awesome so let's just quickly test it here on the a7s2 so also i've got the 24 to 35 millimeter f2 art lens on it and as on the a7 r2 we can see that all our focus modes are available we have single shot and continuous mode and also go back in there uh, we'll see that all our focus areas are available as well so basically I'm just going to quickly test the single point autofocus set to center we can see that it's quite snappy and kind of accurate face tracking also seems to work and also if I switch it over to continuous mode and activate our lock-on mode Let's just move this out a little bit focus on my hand you see that it can also track my hand now so that's great it also works on the A7S2 in stills mode brilliant now what about video mode and autofocus on the A7S2 so again I'm just gonna switch the camera over to video mode on the top and we can hear that immediately the autofocus is being engaged on the lens it's rather a noisy lens At the moment my focus point is still here in the corner you can see I found that it's maybe a little bit sluggish on the A7S2 but it still works it's just really really slow so this little Sigma MC11 converter really delivers what it promises when used in combination with Sigma lenses on the A7S2 or the A7R2 you have basically full autofocus capabilities available as we've shown here and demonstrated on both cameras on both the A7S2 and the R2 combined with the impressive catalog of Sigma lenses that we have available this little converter really makes the A7 series a versatile system so of all the new gear coming out at the moment it sometimes gets really difficult to decide whether or not something's right for you whether or not it will work for you um, whether or not it will work actually as the manufacturer tries to convince you that it would so basically remember when in doubt try and rent gear to try it out before you buy it because let's face it nothing beats a real world test drive the way you shoot